Howdy folks! Today I was going to show you more of the Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLC than I started last week. And then I got my hands on this. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of ten short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Already this game has more character and personality than Fallout 76. <sighs> Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Outer Worlds by Obsidian Entertainment. It turns out that getting fired from development of armoured warfare wasn't actually a bad thing after all, because it gave them the chance, the developers of Knights of the Old Republic 2, Neverwinter Nights 2, Alpha Protocol, Fallout New Vegas and Dungeon Siege 3, the opportunity to make this. A game that I can best describe as a sort of fusion of Fallout New Vegas, Borderlands and Joss Whedon's sadly cancelled science fiction TV spectacular, Firefly. In fact, the only really bad thing I can say about this game so far is that I'm not quite able to generate a character that looks just like me. So this is going to have to do. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Likely bootlickers. Ugh. Initiate skip jump. So, you begin the game as just one of hundreds of thousands of colonists left drifting in space when their colony ship broke down because it just wasn't profitable for the company that owned the ship to recover you all. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies, saving you. 
I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Wait, 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 wait. Run all that by me again? Good luck with what, exactly? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... all the colonists are counting on you. Right, so I guess we're calling that a landing. Although I probably shouldn't complain, that's actually one of my better landings. Um, so who's this Hawthorne guy we're supposed to be looking for? Ah, you've landed good! Hawthorne should be close by. What in law's name? Is that Yeah, him? I think I found him. Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. You've probably noticed that I'm playing on the PlayStation 4. Bit of a story behind that, actually. The Outer Worlds is not an epic exclusive. Um, you can also get it at the Windows Store, but it's not coming out on Steam until next year, for, well, whatever reason. You can, of course, also play it on PlayStation or Xbox. Now, while I am fundamentally opposed to buying anything from the Epic Game Store, um, not just because as stores go, it's pretty shit, but I'm also not terribly keen on giving any more money to Epic than I can possibly avoid just on general principle, because all they seem to do with all of the truckfuls of money that they've made over the years from licensing out their Unreal Engine technology is to throw it at developers in an effort to entice them into signing exclusive deals with their shitty store, rather than actually spending any kind of money on the store and making it a service that's worth using. At the same time, Epic do deserve credit for taking a smaller cut of the profits and giving more money to the developers who publish their games on the Epic Game Store, and if that was all they were doing, I'd have nothing but good things to say about them. But it's not all that they're doing. They're using their hefty financial clout to try to corner the market and establish a publishing monopoly with all of these exclusive deals. And I personally just have a problem with that. Of course, I understand that times are pretty hard for games developers, and if the developer is going to see a better return on all of their hard work and effort by letting Epic sell the game for them, then that's absolutely what they should do. Just don't expect me to buy it. You see now, you've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. So, I've got the PlayStation version. I mean, why not? I've got a PlayStation Pro. Plus, Rita's been streaming various different PlayStation games lately. God of War 2, Spider-Man, she could stream this as well. And then, as luck would have it, on the day this game was delivered, Rita got a game key. <laughs> for free. For the PC version. So, I'm the one who's playing it on the PlayStation. Of course, that means I have to control the game using the PlayStation joypad. And... Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's going to be fine. <laughs> hey, come here. Come here. Oh, hello. You've tried the best now. <laughs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. I might be wrong, Sunshine, but it looks like you've been shot. Let's see what I can do about that. Huh. Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. 
Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Uh-huh. How you doing? Better, thanks to you. I might have bled out on my own. Or worse, had to go begging the boss for some Madrina time. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my sight. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Hang on a minute, back up. Marauders. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics. With guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Sure, or you could give your gun to me and I could sort them out. Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. So where exactly are we anyway? You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that lost colony ship. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with Auntie Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. Right. Okay. So, a little weird. It's like everything here seems to be branded with the Spacer's Choice logo. Is it the company he works for? And he mentioned something about not being allowed to fraternize with the employees of other companies? It did say at the beginning that this planet was the only colony owned and operated exclusively by corporations. Is this like a McDonald's Burger King thing? Well, we're not going to find out by sitting in here. Those look like they're going to go bang if you shoot them, and that seems to be the way out. Damn it, my ears! Oh, what just happened? Can you hear me? What in the... This... It's that weird shit again. Hibernation complications detected tactical time dilation, or bullet time. Due to complications stemming from being revived after an extended hibernation, your brain processes time differently. So, it's bullet time. And this is going to come in quite useful, because I don't mind telling you I am absolutely terrible at controlling first-person shooters with a PlayStation joypad. I mean, it's what you're used to. My mate Eddie grew up playing console games. And this is second nature to him. On the other hand, you stick him on a PC with a mouse and a keyboard. And he has been playing PC games now for long enough to know how to use a mouse and keyboard, but he's just not very good at it, even with years of practice. It was quite amusing watching him playing, well, World of Tanks, which uses the same controls, at least, as a first-person shooter, even if it isn't a first-person shooter. Um, and at first he was just absolutely terrible. But after a while he got used to using WASD uh, and the mouse. He's never been particularly good at it, but with a bit of practice he was competent. I, on the other hand, don't really get much practice using the joypad. Even when I was playing games like Horizon Zero Dawn I would never sit down and have, you know, a session every day because there was always other things that I had to do on the PC. So every time I went back to the PlayStation, I would have to relearn how to play whatever game it was I was playing. I've never really gotten comfortable with using the joypad. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's the complete opposite for Rita. Um, you should have seen her playing Spider-Man on the PlayStation. Within half an hour, you'd think she'd been playing the game her entire life. I could never get the hang of it. 
I never even got past the tutorial on Spider-Man on the PlayStation, and it's an amazingly good game, by the way. Um, but I just I, I could not get the hang of controlling Spider-Man using a joypad. So the ironic thing here is that it was actually Rita who ordered the PlayStation version of The Outer Worlds so that she could stream it on the PlayStation. And then the day the copy of the game arrived, she got a free game code for PC. So I'm the one playing it <laughs> using the joypad, you know, the control system that she's used to, and she's the one streaming the PC version on Twitch. I can't help but feel a little seen off. <laughs> But, you know, it is what it is. And if nothing else, watching me fumble my way through a game using a PlayStation controller should at least be amusing. Anyway, I've got a ship that I need to find. That looks vaguely ship-like to me. Oh, bad guys. Two of them. And all I have is a pistol. So I've got plenty of ammo. Oh, hold still. I wonder if I improve my firearm skill. The sights won't wander around as much as that. Uh, very probably. I mean, this is a role-playing game after all. Thank God. Oh shit, I'm nearly dead. <laughs> I should probably do something about that. Oh yes, I think the first thing that I'm going to want to do is improve my base health. Hey, here we go. Level 2. Like I said, this is a role-playing game. Of course it is. It's Obsidian Entertainment. So, I have been promoted and leveled up. So I'm going to pick whatever skill gives me more health <laughs> so that I can bullet sponge my way through this. If you're as crap as me, I definitely recommend taking the toughness perk. It allows you to absorb 50% more bullets before you die. Right then, let's see about this ship, shall we? Here we go. Little pig, little pig, I'll open up and let me in. It looks all right. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. The unreliable. That's not very reassuring, is it? Quest markers this way. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Whoa, 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 you got me all wrong. I'm not here to steal anything. I detect an elevated heart rate. Indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Preparing to eject all boarding parties in five, four, three, two, one. Engaging airlocks. Engaging airlocks. You know we're on a planet right now, yeah? If you are still here, my deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. So this is Hawthorne ship, yeah? This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Yeah, that could be a problem. I deduce from the tone of your voice that Captain Hawthorne failed to meet you at the designated location. Oh no, we met. Briefly. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Yeah, I think I see where this is going. Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged, and must be replaced. Well, of course it does. Astutely observed. However, 
The probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? I am Alex Hawthorne. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah, I think I've got it. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. And so, the intrepid Captain Alex Hawthorne, that would be me, ventures bravely out into the wilds and ends up here in the town of Edgewater. Looks like a company town. The Spacer's Choice Company. Oh, hey. Where'd you come from? Hello. Let's go and talk to this guy. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. I'm just passing through. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Hi there, I'm Alex Hawthorne. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Say, where can I get this thing? Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. W what's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Oh, you know, bit of this, bit of that. Depends who's paying, really. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. You rent your graves? Company policy. If it was up to me, I'd put the whole town ten feet under. Free of charge. So why can't you collect the fees? Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know. Alright, I'll do it. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. What's special about him? He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. So where can I find these people? Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Well, check me out, all gainfully employed and everything. And welcome to the company town of Edgewater, a town owned and operated by the Spacer's Choice Company. Except it doesn't look like a lot of these spacers have much of a choice. I'm beginning to get the impression that everything here runs on indentured servitude, which is a fancy legal way of saying definitely not slavery, honest. But the only real difference between slavery and indentured servitude is a slave doesn't sign a contract. Here's how it works. A corporation needs workers for its new colony and it offers to cover the costs of transportation to the colony on the condition that you sign a contract guaranteeing that you will work for the company until you've paid back the investment that they've made in you. So let's say the company has invested 12,000 credits in providing transportation to get you to the colony. So it's only fair that you pay back that 12,000 credits. But you're a worker, not a slave, and workers get paid. And the company's going to pay you 500 credits a month. So theoretically, after working for the company for two years, you could be free of your debt. Theoretically. But... You're not living on this planet for free, you have to rent your accommodation from the company. And all of your food has to be bought from the company. And the company can set whatever prices they want for these essential services because it's not like you can go anywhere else. If you get sick and you can't work, they don't pay you a wage because you're not working for them. And of course, all of the medical expenses have to be paid back 
And in this place, they even charge you a rent every month to keep your grave warm in case you need it. So that two years suddenly starts to look more like 20. It's a lot like taking out a college loan. The grease monkey, Argo. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Yeah, and what exactly are you filling these Seltuna cans with? Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. She did. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. No, please, carry on. What you were discussing seemed interesting. You were saying, Miss Holcomb. It's just what Bess needs is a proper refurbish. I, I, I can bandage her up and what all, but she's just... old. Sorry, I I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do better. And I do wish you'd stop referring to our cannery as Bess. Personification of company property is strictly contrary to the Spacer's Choice Code of Conduct. My apologies. I am not in the habit of allowing my guests to witness such a row. Now, what can I do for you? Right, well, I need to speak to the man in charge, and you're easily the dumbest and most condescending person I've come across today, so I guess that must be you. I'm Reed Thompson. Outpost Administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Wow, you noticed that, but you didn't notice that I don't give a shit? Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Well, I'm here for a thing, and apparently you can help. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Oh, I wonder if we can all figure out how this deal's gonna work. My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I'm going to need you to define mostly abandoned for me. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. And you'd prefer if I could arrange for them to not live there, yeah? I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Dude, if you want them dead, you'll have to cover my expenses. Bullets aren't free. Good law, no. I don't want you killing anyone, least of all them. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. All right, so he's still an arsehole, but he's not the murderous arsehole I thought he was. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. Ah, so they have to choose between freedom and starving and freezing to death or coming back to work for you. I am asking you to help us survive. Edgewater needs more workers or we will collapse. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. I can't help but feel that that's something you probably should have taken into account before you signed all these people into decades of indentured servitude. Of course, I understand completely. 
Here, let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant. A sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Are you setting off for the Vale? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want a guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Yeah, why not? Probably do her good. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Right, well, I think I've got everything I need. Bye, Thompson. Hope you die soon. And we've just recruited our first companion. Because it wouldn't be an obsidian role-playing game unless we were playing with a party. And I'm totally cool with that. It'll be just like Baldur's Gate 2, but with guns. And so this is Obsidian Entertainment's The Outer Worlds, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's just really good seeing Obsidian back to doing what they do best without some evil corporate overlord pulling their strings and saying, no, you can't do that, no, take that out, no, make it more like this. This is the game they wanted to make, and so they went ahead and made it. And to be completely honest here, after their experience with Armored Warfare, it's probably not surprising that the game is as viciously anti-corporate <laughs> as it undoubtedly is. But again, I'm okay with that. It's an interesting background upon which to hang the plot of your game. And yeah, I know, the whole corporations are evil and K thing has been done before. Some might say it's been done to death, but it's rarely been done with this kind of style and wit. So... I'm perfectly okay with it. And another thing that I really love about The Outer Worlds, something that's incredibly refreshing and unusual in this day and age, is that you just buy the game, install it, play it, and that's it. They haven't deliberately made it as grindy as possible in order to sell you boosters, there are no microtransactions, a third of the game hasn't been cut out so they can repackage it as DLC and sell it to you later. Nothing is locked behind a paywall. You just play the game that you paid for. Don't worry, I'm sure this radical new approach to marketing is never going to catch on with the major publishers, but I'm just enjoying it while it lasts. And I am enjoying The Outer Worlds. It is a great game. It does exactly what it says on the tin for a very reasonable price and without any bugs that I've been able to find so far whatsoever. It's just fantastic to see Obsidian Entertainment back to doing what they do best. And I have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever in recommending The Outer Worlds to you. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. If you like this kind of game, and you're a fan of Obsidian's previous work, you're going to love this one too. Now I need to get back to playing and put this video to bed, because I've got a lot more to explore. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know you're going to enjoy this game. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.